VPG Onboard Weighing is one of the world's longest established manufacturer of vehicle overload protection and load optimization systems. Today we're going to show you how to install and calibrate your onboard truck weight vehicle load optimization system. Our first step is to show you the components of your truck weight kit. Throughout this video we are going to refer to the truck weight installation, setup and calibration manual that has been supplied with your kit. To start with, let's run through some of the key components in a truckway kit. To start with is the junction boxes, then the axle transducer, a typical cable set, and finally the in-cab meter. For more information you can refer to pages 7 and 8 in your manual. Now let's have a look at the tools you will need to install your system. A wrench, a socket and ratchet set, an air or electrical drill with a set of drills, wire cutter and crimping tool and finally a clamp to apply the pressure to the axle transducers during installation. You can see more information on page 8. There are various types of vehicles with different types of suspension. For example the suspension could use steel springs, air suspension, rubber suspension or a combination of any of these. On page 9 of your manual you'll see how these different suspensions are illustrated. You can then refer to Appendix A at the rear of the manual on page 44 to 50 to identify your type of vehicle. This part of the video is going to tell you how to install the truckway system on a vehicle with four axles, all with steel spring suspension. You can see a schematic of this vehicle in Appendix on page 46. This vehicle needs two junction boxes, one for the front two axles and one for the rear two axles. Each junction box needs to be located close enough to the transducers so the cables reach it. Each junction box should be mounted on a vertical surface of the chassis or subframe with the up arrow pointing straight up and the forward arrow pointing to the front of the vehicle. Select a location that is relatively well protected and easy to access. Please refer to the manual on page 10, figure 1.15 for the components and tools required. This vehicle requires two steel axle transducers per axle. Firstly you will need to decide on the correct location for the transducers. The transducers must be mounted on a flat a surface as possible to ensure a strong bond of the adhesive. There are three very important rules for the orientation of the transducers. 1. Each transducer must be mounted with a groove around the transducer on top. Two. Each transducer must always be mounted in line with the chassis, unless they are on struts. 3. The cable from the transducer must always point from the transducer in the direction of the pivot point of the suspension component to which it is attached. Care should be taken to make sure that the transducer cannot come into contact with any part of the vehicle during the full range of movements of the spring. The transducers can be mounted at the front of the rear of the springs, but the location will become important during the system setup. If the transducers are mounted at the rear of the spring, they are referred to as leading, and you should note this down. If the transducers are at the front of the springs, then they are referred to as trailing. Again, you should note this down. If you are in any doubt, then refer to diagrams 1.23 and 1.24 on page 13 of the manual. Remember to only leave enough loose cable to allow the transducers to move with the spring without pulling the cable tight. Excessive loose cable may result in the cable being snagged. Next, we are going to show you how to position the transducer on the rear leaf springs. With this particular vehicle, the rear two axles are part of a steel spring bogey, also known as a tandem axle. If you look at the diagram 1.29 on page 15, you can see a further illustration of the mounting position and description, such as a leading or trailing. Where they are mounted on the front of the springs, then they are referred to as leading. Again, you should note this down. If you are in any doubt, then refer back to diagram 1.29 on page 14 of the manual. Now you know the location of the transducers, we are going to speak through the steps of how to mount them. 
Next, the mating faces need to be clean and dry. On the spring, clean away all dirt, loose paint and rust. Then, make sure the site is totally dry and clean down to the bare metal. Then, clean the prepared area with the VHP surface cleaner, allowing the solvent to evaporate to leave a clean, dry surface on the spring. Now it's time to clean the transducer with the VHB surface cleaner and then apply one of the VHB tape strips to the transducer, applying pressure to the tape using a roller. Remember to consider the temperature of the surfaces as this should be above 60 degrees Fahrenheit. If not, warm the spring with a hot air gun prior to bonding the transducer. Finally, take the protective strip off the VHB tape and position the transducer in its location. Use a clamp to apply pressure to the assembly for five minutes. Then fit cable ties provide some mechanical support during the bonding time which can take up to 72 hours. The cable ties can be left in place indefinitely. Now we need to connect the transducers to the junction boxes. For this part of the installation it's important that we refer to the procedure on page 17 of the manual. To start with, route the cables along the chassis with existing cable runs, using cable ties to support the cabling. Avoid running cables on or near sharp or hot objects. Identify the transducer's connector with the location of the transducer so you can identify it when connecting to the junction box. The most common method is to number the connector to correspond to its number on the junction box label. Then you should connect each cable to its corresponding junction box and port number as illustrated in diagrams 1.45 and 1.46 on page 17. The next step is to install the cabling for the meter in the cab. At this stage it is very important to point out that you must not connect any of the signal cables to the junction boxes or meter until instructed to do so later in the setup process. The first step is to run the signal cable from the front junction box to the meter. Make sure to identify the cable at both ends. Then run the signal cable from the second or rear junction box. Again identifying the signal cable at both ends so it's not mistaken for the front signal cable. For cables that are longer than they need to be you will need to loop them and retain them using cable ties as shown on page 18 of the manual. Now we are in a position to start the installation of the meter in the cab. Normally the meter will only spring into life when you press the on button. However there is an option to have the meter power up when you switch the engine on. If you require this option then please refer to page 19 in the manual. There are two options for mounting the meter. The meter is either mounted in a standard single DIN ISO radio slot in the dashboard or alternatively it can be mounted in a bracket. Again, details can be found in the installation manual on page 20. The meter requires either a 12 volt supply in the US and Canada or a 24 volt supply in the rest of the world. Locate a suitable point to connect the truck power supply. The meter would normally be powered from a power source that is on when the ignition key is turned to the first position. The power supply to the meter must be protected by a 3 amp fuse and the brown power cable wire. The black wire is the ground or earth. For further illustrations please refer to the diagram on page 21 of the manual. Once again do not connect the signal cables from the junction boxes to the meter at this stage of the installation. There are several additional options for the system that can be found on pages 21 and 22 in the manual. Locate the truck's rating plate and record the maximum gross axle weight and the truck's maximum gross vehicle weight rating and record these figures on the table on page 27 of the installation manual. We are now ready to power up the meter for the first time but make sure that the junction box signal cables are not connected. Before we enter the setup procedure, now is a good time to familiarise yourself with the meter and the keypad panel functionality as illustrated on page 25. 
you should be able to see the LCD display. The on off button, the left arrow button, the up and down arrows and finally the exit button. We are now ready to power up the meter for the first time but make sure that the junction box signal cables are not connected. If the meter asks new junction box trailer swap detected then please press no. Enter the setup menu by pressing the up button until you see menu on the top left of the screen. Press the menu key and scroll the cursor down to set up and select it. You will most likely be asked to enter a PIN number. The default PIN number is 7711. In this installation we are installing a system as illustrated on page 27 of the manual in figure 2.05. From the setup menu select vehicle config then scroll the cursor down to the J box config and select it. Plug in the signal cable from the first junction box into the meter and now scroll down to mode 0 cells 1, 2, 3, 4 and press the select button. The meter prompts are you sure? Yes? No? Press yes. The screen should now say Junction Bot Confirmed OK. Press Yes. Now unplug the signal cable from the first junction box from the meter and connect the signal cable from the second or rear junction box. Scroll the cursor down and select mode 5 cells. 5, 6, 7, 8. Press Select. Press Yes and press Yes again for J Box Configured. OK. Now press exit four times to return to the user weighing screen. It is normal to see a canvas error screen. Ignore this. Power off the meter. Reconnect the first signal cable to the meter so both junction boxes are connected. Turn the meter back on and check that the display finds two junction boxes. Finally, fill in the table in figure 2.11 on page 29 of the manual. We now have to check the number of axles and the weighing mode. Access the setup menu as previously described. Check that the weigh mode is set to multi-axle. If not, then scroll and select weigh mode. Press the edit button until multi-axle is displayed. Press exit three times to return to the weighing screen. Scroll up with the key until you see menu. Press the menu key and then scroll down using the arrow keys and select Setup. Select the Time Date option. Use the Edit keys to input the correct time and date. Press Exit and then Confirm by pressing Yes. Press Exit twice to return to the weighing screen. Now it's time to start preparing the vehicle for the calibration process. First, we have to enter the specific alarm points for the vehicle in question and need to enter the data you wrote down in the manual on page 27. Access the setup menu as you have before and select the alarm option. An alarm point can be set for each individual axle and for the gross vehicle weight or GVW. The correct setting of parameters for each sensor is critical in making sure that the slope compensation works correctly. Specific details can be found on page 30 of the manual, but briefly enter the setup menu and select the vehicle configuration option. Scroll down to gradient compensation and press the edit button. Now you can scroll through each axle and cycle through the options for leading, trailing or non. If you are in any doubt about the correct selection, then refer back to the axle positioning on page 14 and 15. Press exit to leave the menu when you are happy with the settings. This particular vehicle used for this installation has a rear tandem axle or bogey axle. This means that the third and fourth axles share the same rear spring pack. In the setup menu, select the vehicle configuration option. Scroll the cursor down to the bogey position item and press edit to change the setting. In this case, sensors 5, 6, 7 and 8 are fitted to the bogey axle and you should press edit 
until the square brackets appear around these sensors. Once you are happy with the setting, exit the menu. You should only commence a calibration procedure when all the previous steps and installations are set up and have been completed. The calibration must be completed on flat level ground on a calm day. Each of the axles on the vehicle need to be weighed both when empty and when full to complete the calibration process. This can be achieved in two different ways. Today we are going to show you how to do this using a pair of weigh pads and levelling mats. But you can also achieve the same results by using a weigh bridge provided it has a level approach. If you use a weigh bridge then you can measure each axle by driving the vehicle on or off the weigh bridge one axle at a time and noting the readout in each case. The axle weight can then be calculated by simple subtraction. Please refer to figures 3.02 on page 38 of the manual if you need more information. The first part of the calibration is to weigh each axle of the vehicle whilst the vehicle is completely empty. In order to do this, this is necessary to drive the front axle onto the weigh pads whilst the other axles are on levelling mats as shown. Then record the weight on each weigh pad and add the figures together to give the axle weight. Note this value down. You then repeat the same exercise but measure axle 2 as shown. Again record the result. Then axle 3 and finally axle 4. Move the vehicle back onto flat level ground and you can then enter the data for the zero calibration into the meter. This step is also known as entering the individual axle tear weight. Press the menu button on the meter, then select setup, followed by vehicle configuration and then axle tears. You can now enter the empty axle weight or tear weight by selecting each axle and then using the up and down keys to enter the actual weight value that measured on the weigh pads. Once the first axle is correct, then select the second axle and enter the second measured empty weight or axle tear weight. Then the third axle and finally the fourth axle. The next step is to zero the transducers, in other words teach the sensors that the vehicle is now empty. To do this, exit the axle tear screen and exit the vehicle configuration screen. Now select calibrate from the setup menu and then select zero in chronometers. The system will prompt you with are you sure as shown. Select yes to confirm and the meter will show you zero ok as you can see in the picture and then automatically return to calibrate menu. To complete the zero calibration, now select zero in the calibrate menu. Again, the meter will ask you if you are sure. Select yes to confirm and the meter will confirm the zero is OK. You can then press exit three times to return to the main screen. Now that the system can recognise when the vehicle is empty, the next part of the calibration process is to teach the system when the vehicle is full. To do this you need to load the vehicle to as close to the maximum gross vehicle weight or GVW as possible and ideally each individual axle needs to be loaded to as near the maximum load as possible. The GVW must not be less than 90% of the stated maximum gross vehicle weight. The nearer the vehicle is to the full the better but do not proceed with the calibration if you find the gross vehicle weight is below 90%. It is now essential that you check each individual axle weight using the weigh pads. To do this you repeat the procedure used earlier for weighing the empty vehicle. Drive the front axle onto the weigh pads and the other axles placed on levelling mats. Record the values on each weigh pad and then add these together to give the total axle weight. Record this value. The front axle is especially important as it must increase in weight after loading. Some trucks can have very little or no change in front axle weight when they are loaded. If this is the case then you will need to add weight in the cab, enough to give an increase of at least £2,000 or 900 kilograms on the front axle over the reading recorded when it's empty. When you have the results for the first axle, 
Then move the second axle onto the weight pads with the other axles on the levelling mats. Again, take the weight readings from each weight pad and add these together to give the weight for the second axle. Again, take note of the axle weight. Then repeat the process for the third axle. And finally, for the fourth axle. Then move the loaded vehicle off the weight pads and levelling mats and back onto the flat level ground. The axle span figures that are entered into the meter can also be called the axle net weights. The values are calculated by taking the measured value of the axle when the vehicle is full and subtracting the value when the vehicle was empty. Here we will show you how to do this with the front axle. So firstly we take the value of the first axle when the vehicle was full. We then subtract the axle weight reading when the vehicle was empty. And then we note down calculated value. This is the axle span value for the front or first axle that will be entered into the meter. Before you enter this value, repeat this process by calculating the axle span values for the second, third and fourth axle. With the loaded vehicle still sat on flat level ground, select the menu screen on the meter, followed by the setup screen, the calibrate screen and then the calibrate axle span screen. Select the first axle and enter the calculated axle span value into the meter. Press exit once when the value is correct. Select calibrate. The meter will ask you if you are sure and press yes to confirm. Return to the calibrate axle spans menu and select axle 2. Repeat the process to enter the axle span value for the second axle. Then the third axle and finally the fourth axle. Now you can press exit three times and return to the main user screen. The installation and calibration of your onboard truckway load optimization system is now complete. Once you have been fully through the process described in this video, you should have little need to adjust any of the settings in your system unless your vehicle has undergone some major repairs that include the replacement or some suspension components. As a matter of good practice, we do recommend that you periodically check the performance of your system by comparing the indicated weight by the system against a weighbridge reading when the vehicle is near to full. If for any reason you wish to check the setup, then you can find a full listing of the system menus in Appendix B of the installation manuals on page 51 to 56. Thank you for choosing a VPG onboard weighing system.